close your eyes and watch your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's going in. When it goes out, know it's going out. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Learn to be friends with your breath. Try to see what kind of breathing feels good for the body right now. And then you can experiment. Longer breathing, shorter breathing, which feels more comfortable. Heavier, lighter, faster, slower. See what the body needs right now. When you provide for the body's needs, then you can settle down together well, comfortably. The mind needs a good, solid foundation like this because all kinds of things happen in the world. And you need is some place solid to hold on to because things change. Sometimes the change is good, sometimes the change is bad, but the mind needs something solid that can make sure that it knows which way is right and which way is wrong. So you start by settling the mind in like this. And then you look at your life. We need to live together. It's one of the qualities that we need in order to live together well. Well, one is having a good, solid foundation inside yourself, a good, solid basis for happiness inside, so you don't place too much weight on your relationships with other people, demanding too much out of them. At the same time, you learn that a lot of a good relationship is in giving. The Buddha gave actually four recommendations for how to get along with one another well, and they're good to keep in mind. The first one is being generous. Being generous with your time, being generous with your forgiveness. Don't keep a tally sheet of who got advan had the advantage this time, who got the advantage that time. And the, the relationship is best when everybody's giving. So that's the first quality one, is to learn how to be generous, even in times when it's difficult. Second quality is kind words. Speak gently with one another. Don't speak harshly. If you do have criticism, learn how to say the criticism in a way that the other person will be willing to listen to it. In other words, find the right time, the right place. Show respect for the other person, even when you have to criticize what they've done. The worst thing in a relationship is a sense of disdain, a sense of contempt. If the other person senses that, that's the end. If you show that even when you're critical of someone else that you still care and that you still respect them, that makes the criticism a lot easier to take, and it makes it a healthier relationship. If you never say anything at all, when you're displeased, or things actually, after a while, begin to build up, build up, and then they'll explode, which you don't want. What you want is an opportunity to sit down in an atmosphere of mutual respect and sort things out. The third aspect is really helping one another. In other words, when you're going to help somebody else, it's you help them in a genuine way, not just for the show, not just to make points, but say, okay, this is something that person really needs. I have that. I can share it. This is some advice. This is some aid that I can give in one way or another. Okay, do it in a way that you're really looking after the person's well-being, true well-being, what their needs really are. That kind of help goes to the heart. And finally, there's a the quality of consistency. In other words, the way you are today is the way you're going to be ten years from now. The way you are in front of the other person's face is the way you are behind the other person's back. That consistency is what allows for an atmosphere of trust. So you have generosity, you have respect in the way you speak, current general concern for the other person's well-being, and consistency, an attitude of trust. Okay, this is what keeps a relationship going for a long period of time. So it's good to remember these four things. Generosity, kind words, genuine help, and consistency. This way you can live with yourself well because you have a good inner foundation. You can live with other people well because you have the basis for getting along together in an atmosphere where it's really good to live together. Sometimes Buddhism is accused of telling everybody to go off and be alone. But it recognizes that we have to live in a society. You see, the monks live together in a society, lay people live together in a society. So it's good to remember what the basic principles are for living together in a society, living together in a family. Because we need these kinds of relationships. And so we have to learn how to tend to them. It's, it's not something that comes immediately or comes naturally, but it can come with effort and it can come with determination. That you want to make things work. This is how the world works in general, if we all work together to say we want this to work rather than just fighting one another. Then society is a good place to stay. If we're constantly battling, it's not a good place to stay. You wonder why you have society. So make sure that your society together is good, that both sides benefit. That way it can last long.